How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm I'm very well. I'm uh I'm getting ready. So basically after after this, I'm gonna get in my yeah. car and drive down to Texas. <gasps> uh start start a trip down to Texas. I'm gonna um my goal was to train in South Illinois, uh submission grappling tonight. Yeah. Um and then I'm gonna play some music. Uh I'm gonna play some music in St. Louis. Uh meet okay. up with a friend in St. Louis play some music and then stay with him that night, wake up the next day and drive to um, Oklahoma where mm -hmm. I'll, where I'll catch up with uh, Dustin and probably do some more submission grappling with him and maybe some fencing with him and then go fence for the weekend in Texas. So that starts yes. like the moment we turn our uh, podcast off, I'm going to basically get in my car. Um, oh, that's exciting. Well, is. I'm sorry. I got started late. <laughs> no, that's, I mean, you know, uh, so like worst case scenario is I won't get to train in South Illinois tonight, uh, which is already I'm already kind of I'm already kind of pushing it. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But um, OK, I'll just try and train. I'll just try and train on the way back up, uh, you know, so it is it is what it is. But it's yeah. So you had a you had a, an exciting week. I did. I did. My husband and I went and saw Jesus Christ Superstar, which is what my tank is from. Um, which was so good. Like, I already love that show anyways. I used to listen to that album so much, like the, the 70s Broadway recording. Mm. Um, I just tore it up. Um, mm. And then, like, you know, it, you know how things do. It kind of fell off my radar of something I listened to frequently. Yeah. Um, but they were, uh, they were doing a production of it in Kansas City. Um, I'm not sure if it was a traveling production. I think it might have been. Mm -hmm. um, and it was super cool because they kind of, you know, I mean, they they updated the presentation. So, like, a lot of the dancing was, was very um, hip-hop-influenced dancing. Mm. Um, and the, uh, the clothes they were wearing were, um, were also very in that style, right? Very streetwear. Sure. Um, but the, the actors that were playing, uh, that were playing Judas, Jesus, and Peter all not only sang their parts and danced and acted and like did what they had to do, but also played lead guitar for their parts. Neat. And I was super impressed by that. I'm like, how do you find actors that have like, that's a lot of skills. Right. All of those chaps to be able to do all of that well is a, is yeah. a high, is a tall order. Um, yeah. So real quick, while you, while you bring up the, uh, you reminded me of a conversation I had yesterday talking about what it was like to listen to music, you know, we'll say some time ago, right. In a, in a pre, in a pre digital music era. Right. Right. Um, which is, I'm, I'm assuming when it was that you were listening to this, Jesus Christ Superstar, although I mean, For sure. it's possible. So, yeah, I had um, a CD. Right, right. Well, so, and I was having a conversation with a, with a friend and collaborator yesterday about tapping into this um, cultural phenomena that existed for a lot of musicians uh, of our age, right? Mm. Um, where it's like, where we learned so much about music and um, where we learned so much music and so much about music and really bonded with each other over music was in the car. Yeah. Right. And uh, and and like you can talk to everybody or at least like the people that I um, collaborate with and, and commune with vis-a-vis -vis music. Everyone has these stories about sitting in the car for some extended period of time and listening to music and really cutting their teeth uh, on on new music, on like getting into music and like what it was to to use that as a way because there's so much about that, right? There you can be quiet, right? When you're mm. in a car, you can be quiet and peaceful and not distracted, um, and you can hear everything mostly, like depending on your car, car stereo, right? But you can hear right. so much of what's going on. Um, and it was just, it's, it doesn't really exist anymore. I don't think, but, mm -mm. uh, no, not the way that it did. Right. So, but I'm curious, did you listen to Jesus Christ Superstar in your car? Was that one of the places that you would have like had that on? 
Yeah, I think so. I probably did. But, you know, to be honest, I mean, I always have, I kind of always have tunes pumping. And back right. then, that meant over a stereo. Right. And also like, and like, um, but you 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 also have like the same album, right? So like that was the thing. Oh, yeah, like yeah, you were yeah. stuck with you were stuck with the one album. You know what I mean? Like if you had to you had to go like change the CD if you wanted to get some quote unquote variety, you yeah. had to go and like get up off your ass and or do, you know stop doing whatever you're doing and change the CD. And often that was just more of a chore. And we we, we were in a place of acceptance, right? We were like, no, this is what we're doing. We're just listening to this album. If I hear the same song like 15 times, it's just it's just how how we're doing this right now. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and there's just so much variety now. And we right. have so much access to variety in terms of what we're listening to that. Um, and we do it I, privately now. Yeah. Like that's, that's another thing. Yes. Because of these. Right. So mm -hmm. my my kids like my daughter will be listening to she's almost always listening to orchestral productions of video game music because that's her jam. Yeah. Uh, my son listens to an artist called Lemon Demon and he's kind of obsessed with him. So he listens to that. And then, you know, I've got whatever I'm listening to lately has been a lot of bluegrass, been a lot of Americana, a lot of country. Um, but we'll all be in the same room listening to our own shit. Mm. Yeah. Right, right, right. Whereas in the car, you, you know, you'd, you'd often just surrender. You know, it'd be like, yeah. okay, it's 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 this person's turn. And so now we're just going to listen to this, this music, you know, and it was quiet and no one said anything, but I don't know. It was just, so I, I feel like I could spend hours and hours and hours exploring that whole mode of, of listening to music and what it meant for culture and community and, mm -hmm. and, and what it meant for the way that we understood music mm -hmm. and like tapping into, cause it's, it was only a small window, right. In our history of where yeah. that was the way that we did it. Right? Like, the, you know, right you know, from whatever, the 60s or whatever, uh, until the digital music era, right? Right, that 40 years or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, and and in there, <clears throat> the mixtape dominated for 20 of those years. Yeah, yeah. That was one of the, that was one thing that we bonded over, like, hard. Um, yeah. Like the mixtape, mix yeah. What a, what a wonderful time in <laughs> oh and you know what like i have like i i maintained for way too long like i didn't give up the mixtape like mm. i made i kept making mixed cds and mailing them to friends um yeah uh as late as 2012 yeah. i had like made and burned a mixed cd it was so intimate there was yeah. nothing more intimate than than making a mixtape for somebody. Yeah. And and taking a mixtape that somebody made for you and playing it and really just getting into it. That was yeah. the most, I mean, for me, that was the most, I can still name like the top three mixtapes that anybody ever made for me. And I can yeah. still like viscerally feel my relationship with those people. I um, I miss mixtapes badly. Yeah. Yeah. Right, um, because it's not it's not a playlist. Ones. Yeah, no. mm -mm. right. It's something it's something different, essentially different. Uh, yeah, about, about what it what a mixtape is, uh, you know, or mix CD, right? So there there were mix CDs, but it had to. You couldn't just do a do an MP3 dump where you got where you sent no. like seven hundred songs. It had to be like between fifteen and twenty songs on a um, theme. On a theme, yeah, right, exactly. And the, like a well done and waves one, yes like, yes there was an art a pattern yeah there was an art right so there was an art and there was contour um and and there was meaning and yeah, yeah. oh my god <laughs> yeah. we actually we you know so i am here for this conversation but we're on the hook this time <laughs> I know. Right? all right so let's talk about what we're supposed to talk about <laughs> uh so swords. We, yeah we solicited <laughs> we solicited from our audience um some suggestions for techniques or lines in the zettel that we can kind of start to flesh out uh and we got a bunch of good responses or a bunch of really exciting things i think um yeah uh, i'm sure that we both have lots to say about all of this stuff 
Um, yeah. And Did so you have you wanted, one you wanted to get into first? Not particularly. I mean, I suppose there could be an art to how we choose to to go about this, right? Yeah. Um, and I've thought a little bit about how it might be done artfully. Uh, and then I thought there's really no wrong way to do Like we could, you know, we could, we can make something out of whatever order that we, we choose to go by. Sure. Um, and so, I mean, so, uh, uh, did you, and I actually, I haven't checked your Patreon, but did you have any suggestions on Patreon or did you even post to mm -hmm. Patreon to solicit? Okay. No, so. I didn't, I didn't solicit anything from the, from the Patreon this time. Yeah. Uh, well, so, but then, so then we have some stuff here on Facebook and we have uh, one on, yep. on the YouTube video. I guess yep. we can just look at the, here, I mean, so, you know, one way of beginning this is just the the list, right? The list of the hop stew, because somebody brought that up. Right. Right. And, yeah. and I mean, that would be, that, that's a pretty reasonable place to start. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And of course I have books because mm -hmm. that's the way I roll, but I'm going to go ahead and just get that list pulled up for us exactly as it's listed. Um, yeah. So do you want to list off the hop sticker or do you want me to read it the way it is in the. Yeah. Why don't, why don't you read it the way, and then let's talk it. So the thing about this part is that it's not, I mean, so a lot of a lot of the stuff in in the glosses and the text is going to be like mechanics, right? Like the rote mechanics of of a particular action, or like a, maybe some fundamental underpinnings of the tactical setup or whatever. But like this is different, right? This 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 list is a it's a list of the way that Lee Schneider has packaged his art. Yeah. Right? Um, and so I, I mean. Go, yeah, please just go ahead and list it for the um, viewers. Well, I, I think I think we'll be best served by by just grabbing grabbing couplets, maybe. Um, so Zorn How Crump Zfer Het Schieler Mit Scheitler. So you know that's our that's our five uh, strikes. Right. Um, are is the first couplet again like the. Uh, like we can argue about how sophisticated the poetry is, but there's a certain amount of sophistication, right? Mm -hmm. So right. Um, opening with, with the first couplet being the five strikes is clearly uh, intentional um, or, or so I would think so. And, uh, and, and so we can kind of, uh, well, what I would, what I see in that. Yeah. Right yeah. is is and, and particularly in this section is that uh, uh, the sophistication is in it is the list of proper names like proper nouns, but using them as though those words aren't proper nouns. So that's kind of fun. Hmm. Does that make sense? It. It does. It hadn't struck me, but yeah. Um, so, so like, like beginning with Zornhau, right? Okay. So we know Zornhau as, as a, a proper, a proper name. Um, right. <clears throat> but one could, you know, um, if they wanted to play with the idea that, that, that you are Zorning a how. Right, rather than those words being right. a singular name. Yeah, you're not right. that. You're you're not performing a Zornhow. You're you're Zornhowing, right? Like yes, you, you're gonna you're gonna Zornhow that, right? Or uh, yeah, yeah. Or or like you say, you're Zorning a how, right? That's Their another. How. That's that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. That's another interesting. Um, so for me, what I what I think is. Uh, when I hear, well, when I look at the text and I see that the way that the, the information is presented, it's like, we're going to, um, we're going to start with the five strikes. We're going to start, and particularly we're going to start with the Zornhau. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And the Zorn house and the Zorn house different than the other four, right? So like yeah. you have the Zorn house and then you have the other four. Uh, and so that says something to me. Like I think about that and look for significance there. Um, and and so then a question um, that I ask myself is what are we learning from what are we learning from the Zorn how? Um, and then how is that different than what we're learning from the from the next pieces, right? So, right. And uh, and I have a lot of I have a lot of thoughts on that. Um, you know, I think that. Well, I mean, so I so I guess what I would ask you is what what would your answer be to that question? Like, why do you think? Why do you think that they are listed in the order that they're listed in? Why do you think the Zornhau comes first and then the other four? And you know, they are different, but then they're grouped all together as kind of one thing, right? The five, mm-hmm. the five uh, hidden hidden cube or whatever. Um, you know, there's like twenty different names for for it. Um, right. But like, you know, and then and then why? And then and then later, and when we get to the rest of the the Hauptstücke, then we'll talk about how those things are different again right right but what are your what are your thoughts there uh so so whatever is presented first has a place of primacy yeah to make a pun Mm. Mm. um and so that's i think that's why we start with the zornow right um it is emphasizing the point. Yeah. Yeah. Again, yeah. punning. I'm I'm real deep today. <laughs> but emphasizing the point. So we're beginning, we're beginning there. That like the point is the center of the art. It is the thing. It is the prime thing. Focus on that. Right. Um and and, and don't, you know, don't worry about whatever kind of Oprah how he throws at you, right? Mm-hmm. Um get 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 your point in there. Um, and, and so, so it is set apart in that way. Um, whereas the other four are not only the strikes, but they are their own idea, which comes up later of, of them being for sets in, right. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. parries or oppositions or, you know, unharborings, whatever. I don't care what translation you want to use. It doesn't matter. Sure. Um, <clears throat> So we're, we know it's set out in that way. And that's a, that's a very, four plus one is a very uh, central idea to medieval thought, Mm -hmm. right? Because you have four elements that are earthly, Uh, and then you have the quintessence, which is that fifth one. Sure. Um, And, and so by starting with the quintessence, by starting with long point, by starting with this idea yeah. of point and presence, we're going to say, this is, this is the thing that matters. And then we're going to follow that up with how we're getting there. Cause we're always yeah. going to get there. Yeah. I, I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, you? so, the, <laughs> so, um, so for me, you know, I, I mean, I, uh, not substantially different from what you're saying there, right? especially with the idea that the Zorn, um, I feel like the Zorn teaches you uh, what it means to be in control, right? So using mm-hmm. the point, right? Using the point to establish a position of control in, you know, at a distance where you can actually use that position of control to, to you know like so so you know so for me that's the first thing that we're learning it here is that like okay we're about to enter distance the first thing that we we need to establish like as we do that is Mm -hmm. a position of control right so and then and then from there we have ways that we can explore that position of control depending on our opponent's reactions Mm -hmm. right so now we've already introduced a framework to understand Voronok, right? Sure. We've already understood. 
and and then and then you know in the reactions now we also understand uh in how indus plays a role in this right because you know what happens so initially what happens is the you know you have the 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 i'll use the terms now um i know that uh <laughs> people look at 3227a with uh, a particular set of tinted glasses but um i yeah so we'll use the term the four strike right so the the, sure. the four stroke and um and then in that moment we're going to want to seize a position of control and force our opponent into some kind of motion right yeah so we've already learned we've already learned the base from my perspective the basis of all of these in hours are right yeah. which is to seize a position of control to force your opponent into motion to mitigate your position of control right that's it that's the fundamental and then from there it's just a matter of how that manifests right and how that and plays the, out yeah yeah and the rest of the and the rest of the zorn how is just okay there's you know here are some ways that it plays out right like so the opponent can do this and this is the motion that you're creating and this is the tactically advantageous response that you can perform in does that motion, mm -hmm. right? Uh, depending on what the nature of the motion is. So whether it be strengthening or weakening or cutting around or cutting, you know, or, dirt, you know, going underneath or whatever it is, once you've established a position of control, you've put yourself in a position where you have actions available to you that happens faster than any of your opponent's actions, right? That's the nature of that position of control, right? Mm -hmm. It's not to say that your opponent can't perform an action, right? But just that if you are present, if you are in the moment, right? You, you know, you're uh, tethered, you're alive, like right? the broomstick, um, then you should be able to perform your action, your response, and complete it faster than your opponent is able to. Right. And that's the Zorn how. And and the Zorn and it takes you through, you know, does it take you through all of the infinite number of permutations of this? No. No. But it gives you a good solid framework to understand them in a basic way, but you know, the various permutations in a basic way. So that it gives it leaves you with a, a pretty good understanding of what the what your actions, what the actions available to you are. Yeah, I for feel sure. Like that's, I feel like that's the Zorn how. And then, as you say, like it's four plus one, right? So then I look at the rest of the, um, the Vir Fusetsen, um, and I think he's established with the Zorn how right. that, that what we're seeking is this position of control. Yeah. We're going to assume that our, our opponent is likewise seeking a position of control. Right. Yeah. We're not just going to say, I mean, it can happen that he just surrenders it to us. Uh, yeah. But um, we, we shouldn't expect that. And so we yeah. should have a, have the wherewithal to approach that distance in a way that um, can create the motion before we enter that distance mm -hmm. so that we can be left with that position of control. And yeah. And that will be dependent on where their sword is when you're out of distance and you just pick appropriate actions on your way in. So that's kind of the way that I'm looking at the, the, the five there. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and I think in the context of this, uh, this mini poem, um, you know, we have Zorn, how Crump's fair, um, Crump's fair, you know, we know them again as, as proper, proper nouns that mean specific strikes. And we do know that if you crump their blade, you're going to follow that up with a sphere, most likely, right? Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. a combo uh, that gets taught um, in the way I read it, interpret it, whatever. So, but that's what, that's what I see there. So, so, so we have, <clears throat> there are these two ideas these two strikes and they are combos and crumpet sphere in just common parlance would be if i were to say to you zigzag yeah yeah right crisscross right 
Right. So, you know, uh, so if, if you wanted to read it, you know, uh, strike wrathfully zigzag. Hmm. Yeah. Right. Would be so a, a, a translation of that. Right. Right. right? So, so, so you're actually hitting on something that we should probably have started with. Um, and you, and you also kind of suggested it when you're like, in my interpretation, right? Yeah. So I think an important thing to note here is, um, it's impossible for us to know everything in the head of everybody and anybody who ever wrote or read these things, right? right. That's, <laughs> that's not, that's not how this works, right? Right. These are meditative tools. They teach us or they give us a framework, a limiting principle that we can use to explore the ideas of swordsmanship and our bodies and what we know already. And that's how this works, right? So like, we're not looking for the ultimate, like, this is what it's supposed to look like, right? Because right. It, it just, it doesn't, that's not the way this works, right? Yeah. So... The question is, when you read it, what do you get out of it? That's really the question. Like, I, I, I know it's unsatisfactory to the HEMA community because what we've set our planted our flag in this idea that we're going to like re reconstruct, right? Go back to the dance video uh, that we linked yeah. last time. It doesn't work. You, what you do is you construct, and forming yes. your construction with this historical piece. And the other thing is, that's what they were doing. That's what they were doing. Like. You know whoever you know whoever did the goliath right right they were reading it and they probably and they saw they weren't blind they were like oh this is chris you know this is zorn crisscross like they they understood that even though there are other levels and other ways that you can interpret this stuff right right and so um and so yeah for that reason it's like good poetry right um yeah. you read you read good poetry maybe there's one meaning maybe you read it again you're like oh i i hadn't put these ideas together that way. That's cool too. Right. 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 Um, you know, and then, and then the next cup or the next line is, is, you know, have Sheil with Scheidel. Right. Mm. Um, and so again, we have potentially here, uh, a combo strike. Mm. Cause certainly dropping a shield and a Scheidel is a really beautiful combo cut you should be practicing. Sure. Right? Sure. Um, you know, uh, and there's certainly, you know, other ideas you can be you can be playing with in there depending on your interpretation, but you know, we don't need to belabor it, but but the point is 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 that it sets us up with these Right. No, no, totally. Totally. Ideas. Yeah, I I think that that's and I think and I think uh, you're right, you know, pointing out that that there's that crisscross in there, right? So mm -hmm. pointing out that that's that's a cup, that's a that's a pairing, mm -hmm. right? So, um, and it's and it's a pairing, not just in terms of the fact that they're juxtaposed. It's a pairing because of because of the colloquialism of the day, yeah. Right? And so anyone who reads that is going to understand that as a pairing initially, even if as they read later into the text, that oh, these are their own independent things that have their own sort of permutations extrapolated out of them but but it wasn't the, that's not written that's written later right like here it's just these are a pairing and so yeah and yeah, so, yeah. Cool. right and and you know uh you know if we want if we wanted to translate you know shield and scheidel is is squint in part you know mm -hmm. um squint again being cross-eyed not being mm -hmm narrowing of the eyes right so you know uh you could easily see how that idea of come to the center hit the center mm -hmm. is is a fun visual to to just pop in your mind so you can remember this shit, you right know? right right um, i love it all right so um all so, okay. sets. ah yes well, go ahead. I want to hear you. Alba resets, right? So um, Alba is standing in here as representative of all of our guards, uh, which is a curious choice because they could have said Lager resets, but they didn't, mm. right? 
So Al Alber, right, being foolish or 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 tricky, mm -hmm. um, and Versets being either Perry or right oppose right. or make somebody move. You know. Right. Right. Yeah. So this is uh this is one you know we might as well say it right even though it's been talked about ad nauseum that um you know fool parries don't parry lisa now doesn't want you to parry <laughs> right like, bullshit right <laughs> I mean, it's just it's like yeah i mean so so but it, it is a point of confusion uh yeah and and it it definitely it, you know, it depends on how you want to define things, right? So, you know, one way of thinking about it um, that that sort of makes a coherent piece out of out of what the Zornhow is, right, mm -hmm. is that if you're parrying with the point, then you're not parrying, right? right? So, um, you know, when you read Meyer later, he says, he basically says, you know, you want to parry with advantage. You know, an advantage is is probably a little bit more precise, um, you know, and a sort of more modern way of describing the same fundamental, you know, the, the essence of what Lee and I was communicating when he's talking about and, and giving the primacy of the point to the point, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, Myers says, like, if you parry without advantage, right, if you're pairing with no advantage or no sense of advantage, uh, then, then you're you're, you know, you're going to get hit. Right. Yeah. And so like, and so this is sort of, I find one of, one of the values and the utility of, of looking at like the people in the, and who are using least an hour's text um, and the stuff from the various glosses later in its history um, is that, you know, I, I, I enjoy the, the ideas there. And so like, for instance, Meyer saying like, you shouldn't, you shouldn't parry without advantage right mm -hmm. so like so, so that helps kind of understand maybe the function of a zorn right maybe understanding what you know what a parry with advantage looks like and why we might not even regard that as a parry you know so that's sort right. of my that's that's my that's my angle on that oh absolutely i mean and it, even if you're looking at the earlier stuff it clarifies on what you should not do which is you should not parry with your point high and wide. Right, right. So the opposite would be you should parry with your point low and narrow. Right, right, right. But then the question is like, yeah. So then the question is, um, you know, should you, yeah, is that a parry, right? And that's sort of like, um, you know, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I could spend yes. a lot of time. Yeah, yeah, it totally is. Like, you, we, because we need that because we need to understand knock and we need to understand how you can be in the knock against someone who's throwing a committed attack or a threatening attack, right? Something that you have to mitigate, right? right? And so if, you know, if we, if we don't, if we don't admit to ourselves that we need to mitigate that in a way that doesn't involve directly hitting them, depending on how they're approaching. Mm -hmm. then we're going to get hit at least doubled, right? Um, right. Well, and I mean, this comes into what, what one of our listeners mentioned in the, in the Facebook is, is he was saying, you know, oh, you know, that he really likes the Versetzen and that they all work as advertised, except for he doesn't really like Crump against Ox. He really prefers to hit the blade. And so what we're, what we're seeing there is he's saying, I would prefer to parry with this Versetzen, hmm. right? That's fine. That's fine, you guys. Like, you're if you're if you're throwing it fair against an Oberhau, it does not have to simultaneously hit the head. You can just parry their blade, right? Right. And right. Then well, work. and so and again, uh, go back to three two two seven A. All of these strikes end in thrusts. Right. So you're, you know, reading 32. I'm not saying that it's always universally true for every gloss, but at least in 3227A, 
they throw an incoming strike, you catch it on your cross and thrust them in the face, right? Or, or face or breast, I think, right? right. With, with, with regards to this. Right? So if it's true that it ends in a thrust, then the beginning of the action has to land or it has to sort of, you, you have to meet the bind at a distance where you're not directly hitting them in the head. Mm -hmm. Right. So what is that? Is that a parry? Can we call that a parry? Like, <laughs> yes. right. Yeah, yes. exactly. Right. And I think, I think this is where, you know, having a look at some of the Messer texts, not Lakushner. Lakushner is not going to help you on this, but if you look at Glasgow, if you look at, um, uh, Jobs von Furtenberg, if you look at blah, 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 there's a few other places, but uh, freaking Tollhofer, right? <laughs> You're going to see that they describe a simple or a straight parry, which is, you know, the bad parry, right? But of course you're going to do it in Messer. And then an inverted parry where you're doing more of a Zornow, where your point, you're going to catch something, you're going to catch it on your cross and your point's going to gack them in the face. Mm -hmm. It's a parry that leads to this thrust. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and it gets called out there uh, in a way that it doesn't, get labeled with a proper noun in in the early Lishan hour stuff. But right. Right. it's still there, y'all. still there. Right. All right, um, so we got that. Nakreisen, Uberlauf, how sets, right? Okay, yeah. So these are my, these are some of my favorites. Uh, and I, th and you know, uh, you know that about me. Oh, oh okay, all right. I'll start with this one. So, so Nakreisen, um, we have, uh, there's there are various ways that we can think about knock risen, uh, especially when you get to the the knock risen section. They give us exemplar of knock risen, but it's my view that essentially any action that looks to hit indes is knock risen. That's my perspective, right? Mm -hmm. Knock risen is chasing the opening, moving into an opening as it's being created, right? Yeah. Um, and so now. That now, how do we how do we want to think about how an opening is being created, right? Uh, yeah. We can talk. Uh, I, I I really enjoyed uh, your you had a take a few years ago. I don't know if this is still you know one of the predominant ways that you're thinking about it, but the idea that you know as your as my opponent's point is moving backwards, right? So like if if their point is moving away from me. That's yeah. an opportunity for knock rising. I, I I don't think that's exhaustive. I think that it's a no. little bit more precise to say that, um, you know, that basically if we call it any opening being created, um, that that would that would be an opportunity to knock rising. So that will often involve your opponent's point moving back, but yeah. it'll also it'll also involve your opponent's point moving across, your opponent's point moving high. Right, your opponent's sword hilt moving high, point moving low. These are all opportunities outside their blade, inside their blade. These are all opportunities for knock rise. And, and what's important is that who has a position of control, right? Mm -hmm. If if I have a position of control, meaning if my sword is in between your sword and me, and so that's mm -hmm. the way that I'm going to define from from my perspective. Uh, you know, if I have that position of control, then uh, then any action that you do is going to involve your point moving away from me, right? So moving, so being withdrawn, right? Because you have mm -hmm. to take it because you there's no direct path to my uh, to the target to me, except right. for through my sword, right? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I'm, I, we, we can talk about outside winding later but but anyway um so 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 that's the way i think about knock rising and mm -hmm. then and i love that it's juxtaposed with uberlaufen because uberlaufen if we look um so the way that i read uberlaufen especially later in the text is it's not just that the extension of my arm is sort of the longest you know uh dis or distance and then if you go to strike my foot then i'm going to hit you in the head like that is true right but I don't right. think that I don't think that really communicates the principle of foot. If you, it, it, what I use as evidence to support that is the Uberlaufen section, where yeah. you know where what it amounts to me 
uh, is that as an opponent is cutting in, I'm taking uh, a strong position on their blade, putting my blade on top of theirs, right? So uh, if, you know, if I have that position where I'm dominating the center, right, pushing their sword down and away from me, mm. right, that, that if they try and push towards me, that I will maintain control of that fine, mm -hmm. right? Be, be stronger against. Right. Sure. So that's that's my angle on Uberlafen. And so Uberlafen and Nachreisen are are uh are sort of um uh they they should they should go together. Also because they're not their concepts, they're tactical concepts rather than sort of like these uh elemental uh techniques, right? Elemental mechanics or elemental blade actions or whatever that the rest of the um, the Hauptstücke could be interpreted as, right? So like, yeah. so Überlaufen and Nachreisen are these tactical concepts that you want to have optimal blade, Überlaufen, you want to have optimal blade positioning. You want to have your sword in between their sword and you. Uh, ideally, that's over, right? Because we're humans and we defense on earth. And so there's gravity, right? And so, uh, you know, that being said, you can be strong from underneath, but you need to be pushing away. Sort of anything above, I would say anything like almost above the center line, where their sword is sort of like this. This would be, and uh, now I'm now I'm reaching. I can't support this with the text, but like I would regard this as being Uberlaf, right? The, this person has a strong uh, angle on the opponent's sword if their sword is sort of if we're, you know, because this is my extension, right? The farthest extension. So like if my hand starts drifting up, I'm pulling away. Mm -hmm. Right? Does that make sense? So yeah. if you're inside of me when I'm up, from my perspective, I regard that in a similar way to, to Uberlof. But that being said, it is still optimal to be on top and pushing down because of gravity. Right. So yeah. that's Uberlofen. And then knock rising is just when you have that, you force your opponent to give you an opening, regardless of what action they take. That's, yeah. you know, that's, that's, those two concepts for me are so fundamental to Leech and Hour's art. They're, they're basically mm -hmm. a, another framing of the whole five words paradigm. Um, mm -hmm. And, and, and so that's, you know, and that's why I think they're there, right? The, yeah. In that, in that order like that. So now yeah. I've said my piece, so you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and it's chasing and overwhelming, right? Yes. Right. Right. Uh, so, so just again, to take it back to just like, it's just a verb. It's not a proper noun. It's not a technique. It's not a tactic. It's just, it's just a verb chase and overwhelm them. Right. 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 And this line isn't a pair. It's a three again. Mm -hmm. So we have not grace and Uberlauf and in, in Danzig, at least it says how sets, um, in, in uh, Lev, it says obsets, right? So we know obsets. So again, you know, the, in the Danzig version of the poem, right. uh, rather than using the expected proper proper noun name, right. um, it's setting setting strikes, yeah. right? Setting out strikes. Uh, so, and I'm, I've, I forgot to add the last thing there is that. Yeah. So, so uh, if I have a, if I have established Uberlof and I've established established this sort of position of dominance where I'm overwhelming my opponent, I'm going to chase them into openings as they create them, right? Yeah. But I that I also have to have a response if they do nothing. Yes. Right. That, so that's the other piece of that, right? Is that it's no good if I if I if my plan is to move into an opening as you create it, uh -huh. right? But I have no threat if you do nothing, mm -hmm. then that doesn't get me any further down the tactical road, right? Like right. it doesn't, it doesn't get me any further into the exchange. It doesn't create a moment for me. So I need, and the beauty of this strong position, the beauty of Uberlafen is that if you do nothing, you leave yourself open to get stabbed in the face anyway. Right. Right. And so I can initiate the action, right? If you do nothing. Yeah. And so that's, yeah. it's a mechanic, right? Because there's the, the actual physical mechanic of, of learning how to A, wind, but B, just thrust, you know. So and sets and absets, I think are, you know, um, should be looked at as sort of 
uh, being similar or whatever. Like we could talk mm -hmm. about that, but 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 yeah. Sorry, I so I just wanted to because no, 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 no. I, yeah. I I didn't I got those two concepts, but I I didn't finish with the absets. Go ahead. Right, right, and and yeah, and and absets uh, and onsets, you know, uh, work together in curious ways that you know we can geek out about uh, ad nauseum. But but yeah, I think it's I think it's fun. We've come back to a back to a three on this line, um, and you know, and then we see two again. Der Schwechsel und Zuck. Yeah. So tell me, tell me what your what your thoughts are there. I mean, I've heard you. You've given this like lecture. It's available for online for everybody to hear sure. your tree. But uh, but let's talk about yeah. it. I mean, someone wanted to hear about it. So here we go. Right. Well, you know, I mean, I tend to pair upsets and interspecsum, but in this case, they aren't paired, right? Mm. In this little bit of poem, Der Schwechsel and Zucken are together. And so, uh, it, but that's uh, not a problem. It's actually great, right? Um, so Der Schwechsel, it, in my view, is, is some sort of circular action, typically with the point to, uh, to disengage, right? You're going to yep. get to the other side of the sword, typically staying rather extended ish right yeah. and and making some sort of 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 a circular motion right mm -hmm. to to achieve that um zuken is a disengagement by pulling mm -hmm. um i learned the term coupe recently which is <laughs> very much a, a zuken in my mind um sure. but but so we could we could zook with the point like we would with a spear. So this mm -hmm. is very linear that I'm just kind of pulling straight back and pushing straight in, mm -hmm. um, being very thrusty in that way. Or I can zook with the whole damn blade, pulling the blade back and pushing the blade back in. I don't care. They're both zooking, which you're going to use the right one. That's what you're going to use. Right. Um, and uh, and and Der Schwechsel. You know, if if we listen to Ringek, if we want to, um, you know, at some point he talks about coming in with the pommel, right? Like to pommel strike. And mm -hmm. it, he calls that a Der Schwechsel mm. with the pommel. Mm -hmm. right. 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 So so these these ideas of 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 disengaging to the other side of the blade, you know, that I think that's why these are these are paired in this little section. Yeah, no, I think I think that's good. So for me, so obviously um, there are instances, or I think uh, instances of Zuckin where it seems pretty clear that the point is staying under the blade, right, and the pulling is happening with the blade essentially parallel or like the way that it would be if you were doing a dorsal except you're with like if you were drawing it from a sheath. Right. right. Sure. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So, so that's in that is in the um, the uh, the um, Zuckin section, right? Uh, I like thinking personally. I like thinking about Dursfexen being a uh, sort of uh, a disengage where you're going where you're sort of going underneath, right? Versus yeah. a disengage where you're coming over the top. Um, yep. Just personally because it helps. When I'm when I'm trying to make these ideas, when I'm trying to present these ideas to new new people, um, that I, I think that sort of I thinking about thinking about this action, you know, the withdrawing of the point and then reintroducing the point, um, it as a Durst um, I think is often very useful to people who mm -hmm. are just learning. Who are just learning these ideas, right? Like, so the where does the where does the point go? Is the point going under, or am I pulling my my sword back and pulling my hilt, mm -hmm. you know, back? Um, but yeah, certainly somebody, right, didn't think about it that way. Somebody felt like we should think about these two as sort of the point is moving forward in the action, right, mm. versus the point is moving back in the action, right? Yeah. Um, I think the important thing to note with regards to these techniques is that these are these are indes actions, right? So up until now, I mean, I, the the Zorn the Zorn is an indes action, 
but um the 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 four strikes right the the four versetsen are actions that you can do and as or uh init initially right so uh, you can begin you can begin your action you can enter a range with the the um as a four strike right the correct the, um now we're in the realm we've left and then and then so we've got that we've got the five strikes you know how to enter distance how to control uh the blade when you're in distance then we have these concepts of how to be strong how to chase openings right mm -hmm. and now we're in to the nuts and bolts of the actions that we do end as our opponent's actions right so i feel mm -hmm. like we've 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 um we've move to a new you know mm -hmm. if a grouping of what of how these techniques work together right so like we're we're now in the this is what i do when i'm presumably in control and mm -hmm. responding to my opponent's actions so that, yeah. that would be the other way that i would think about that yeah i mean i have a different framing but it doesn't matter sure. um well, no but i'd like to hear it please yeah um so I think about, I think about Indes as being introduced during Nakar Eisen, right? And how, um, well, Indes gets just funny. That's a, that, you know what? That's a whole, we'll do an Indes, we'll do an Indes podcast. Sure. Okay. Cause it, it's just too weird and too slippery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's too indes to talk about it <laughs> without going into its own thing. Um, but I think one thing that always has stuck out to me about Dirsch Vexel and Zucken as we're thinking about it, of course, I'm strongly influenced by the armor section talking about them. Um, mm -hmm. It describes both of them with spear, right? Um, right. And spear, you're almost never going to like lift your point and come of over course. to the other side. Of course. Right? Yeah. So uh, the over under differentiation is less useful to my brain because mm -hmm. it gets in the way of doing those in armor. Um, but one thing I do think about, which might be useful for some people, is uh, Der Spexholm and, and is very mm -hmm. useful before a bind has occurred mm -hmm. and Zuckin is very useful after a bind has occurred yeah yeah i like that, um, I like that and so i find that i mean all things can be done at, you know like we've said there's infinite permutations of these ideas but right you know yeah, when you're so, breaking them down to their core so know? yeah so for so for me um for me the way that and because you're right I, I i i like that a lot i would say though um blades can be touching and a dirt fix and still be the appropriate action right because again sure. none of this stuff is exhaustive it's just like a way to think about it to make us know more about these swords and how they work right so but yeah. like um if we're bound if we're bound at the week right then we're gonna dirt fix them right if we're trying to change sides or trying to force movement we're, we're gonna um and i would say that being bound at the week is still a bind right um sure yeah 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 you know and so so for me and just to just to kind of flesh it out a little bit more when i when i think about what i'm gonna do i think about where my point is in relation to your cross right so if i if my point if i were to try and durst mm -hmm. would hit your cross Right, so I'd have to draw a bigger circle, right? A giant, in you know, a long sword, I would have to draw a giant yeah. circle, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> then, then I'm probably not in a place where Durst Vexen is the appropriate, uh, is the appropriate action, right? Right. Because that just takes too long, and so you would be able to see my big ass Durst Vexen and begin to work within it before I could complete it, right? Yep. So in that case, I would zook in, right? Yep. And maybe. The correct way to zook in in that case is just to pull your sword back a little bit. Then you can do a right? <laughs> you know, right, or whatever. Right. Then you can then you can disengage, right? Or yeah. maybe maybe even though we're at a distance where my point is is by your cross, 
we're not, our swords are not sort of there. And so maybe yeah. the correct action is to pull my sword up and away and come maybe. back down. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So. Absolutely. I mean, all of the, all of those things are definitely, definitely possible. I mean, you know, let's not forget, you know, in the, the, the verse of the Zook and it says step close. Right. So that already tells us something about it. Right. Um, and, and in the, in the, um, in the gloss of Dirsch Vexel, it's explicit to Dirsch, like throw your sword out, wait yeah. for them to try to bind Dirsch yeah. Vexel and go, exactly. right? Beat the bind, so right. yeah, of course we can do all these other things. I completely agree with you. <laughs> right. um, so we have a three again, okay. right? So we have Dirsch Lauf, Abschneid, Hendrücken, mm -hmm. right? So Dirsch Laufen is run through, Abschneiden, would be to slice off and then Hendrukin would be to press the hands. Yeah. So uh, I want to hear you. So I, I don't, I hate this. I hate this line. I hate this line. I'm so jaded by the way that this uh, sort of is, is worked out in the text. The, the difference between Abschneiden and Hendrukin. Um, and so I want to hear you talk about that because I don't have, I don't have, generally positive things to say about why those things are broken out. And, and I don't want to like contaminate the ambiance of <laughs> our, our podcast. Of our discussion. Yeah. So tell me why, tell me what you think about that. Yeah. Well, okay. So uh, for me, and I, and we talked about this last week in our unfortunate invocation of silver um, that running through is uh, you know, whenever they've stepped close, Right. Mm -hmm. um, it, so you're gonna you're gonna wrestle. They've come so close that your sword is no longer useful. Curious that it follows up the instruction of step close and zuken. Right. Mm. So there may be something there one should explore is how zuken and Dershlaufen interact with one another potentially. Because mm -hmm. um, boy oh boy, if you're doing that big zooken of withdrawing your blade clear up over top and back down boy that takes you through that hands high point to the side position that mm. there's often discusses and if you are pulling we should knock her ice in and chase in right so mm -hmm. anyways but but that's neither here nor there that's just if you needed more context of why i think that here you go um but yeah so so we have that that running running through idea um, Abschneiden is, you know, slicing to the arms is mm -hmm. at least what it gets described as, uh, most often, um, though Danzig has some fun hot takes on slicing off of the sword, um, yep. rather than slicing yeah. their arms off. Right? Right. right. So definitely some, some useful things one could play with there. Um, and Hendrickson is, uh, to my mind, well, let me say this. Okay, all right. So, run through, right? Um, is is that pressure coming in? Like, like if someone were running through me, mm -hmm. they would be <clears throat> pressing into me. Mm -hmm. um, so one could chase in a way by withdrawing before that right mm -hmm. so using an option but like not the pushing also like like everybody likes the pushing really hard version of the slice where you lay and you press in real hard and it does say mm -hmm. that in some of the glosses and some of the places mm -hmm. but there's no reason you can't do a pull slice mm -hmm. right um so that is an that is an option there and for me, Hendedruken, which is uh, a slice in ox followed by a slice in flug, mm -hmm. um, is the solution for they are pressing so effing hard that you can't get free with your slice. There is nothing mm -hmm. left to do. So you have to wind it and you have to send their energy around, right? Yeah. Just like you would do... Um, I don't know with, with certain kinds of certain kinds of punch blocks, right? Where you're blocking the punch from the outside, sort of scenario. You're redirecting mm -hmm. their energy, yeah, because there's no stopping their energy. Sure. And sure. Hendedruken exists for that. 
Whereas a straight Abschneiden, if you're my size fencing someone your size, James, is not going to solve that problem. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah. So um, I also, huh, how do we think about the, the Zekerer in particular instances too, right? So that, that's sort of where my mind goes sure. when you start thinking about the slice and the hand truck and, and the Zekerer. They're all um they're all sort of dealing with 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 similar problems yep um and and they all they can all be approached in different ways or or you can sort of you can operate at a sort of less granular level of detail mm -hmm. and just treat them all mm -hmm. as kind of uh basic you know versions or iterations renditions of of a particular thing right yeah. which is that when you know when the opponents when the opponents um Hill, hand slash hilt goes high, right? Then they they expose their hands, and they can expose their hands kind of on either side. Um, if they go high in a sort of a hang and parry, the, the, if my sword is here, right, and my sword is to my right, we'll say it leaves me open on my left. Yeah. But also, if 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 they wanted to attack through my sword on my right, they could do that as well, right? And and yeah. as you say, um, if so I like to think about hand trucking as sort of almost establishing a Zorn structure, a Zorn posture on the arm. So instead of Zorning, instead of Zorning the blade, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm establishing a strong structural advantage on the arms. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's, that's sort of the way that I look at hand trucking. Um, I'm still not satisfied with why, um, with personally, I'm not satisfied with with why slicing and hand trucking are 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 different. Um, you know. Well, I, oh no, I can solve that for you. Sure, go ahead. Why? Why is upsets and invented different? Sure, sure. I mean, these are just these are just uh, the same question, right? That's that's true. That's true. That's true. Okay. I right. mean, so, I, so I, I do have an answer that I am more satisfied with with regards to why than but no, I but know. I like but no, it's it is it is and so I guess where so here's what it leads to me because it because I, I agree that they're the same question and I would say that um this is where I get to this is where I get to the part of the text where I say to myself man if i were writing this list of 17 i might write it a little different right like and i'm okay sure. with that you know yeah. i'm not I, you know I, i'm okay with that <laughs> i don't yeah. i don't mind that i think i'm better than least an hour in this particular right. sense right, right. <laughs> i mean right I, you know um yeah, i don't yeah, actually yeah. think i don't actually think i'm better but i but but listen if we're not allowing ourselves to say like, hmm, I feel like my truth, given my reality, um, would be better served by articulating this thing a, a little differently. Mm -hmm. If we're not allowing ourselves to say that, we're just not being honest because we do that right. with everything else. Yeah. Right? So, like, yeah. you know. It's, yeah, no, I completely agree. It's totally fine. You know, um, I think, I think, for instance, a lot of people have um, a, a strong, and I know you happen to be one of these people, um, a strong pull to the five words as a thing. Mm -hmm. And that just, I don't give a shit. It's <clears throat> just never spoken to me as an important thing. Of course, they are important. I'm not saying they're not, but right. But but that is a, a thing in your brain. No, no. Right. It just hasn't been for me. Right. So yeah, That's and fine. you shouldn't be, and you know, you should be bullied into thinking about every <laughs> single thing that you ever do with a sword and fully in terms of the five words. Five right. words and that's it. Nothing else, that's Jess. It. Get rid of everything right. else. Otherwise you suck. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Um, and then our last, well, almost the last, we're almost at the end of the mini poem. Right. Um, hang, wind with the openings. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, um, you, you go first. I spoke a lot. 
last time. Let's hear oh, more. I mean, we both have plenty of plenty to say, right? Um, you know, uh, it, it's fun. It's fun uh, hanging and winding. Um, there are so many ways you could you can see those and play with them. We know they go together, right? Um, I, that just gets said multiple times, um, but you know it, it's here in the mini poem, and um, and and to do it, you know, with with the openings is interesting. Um, my brain is not getting the exact. Mm, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to. We'll have to talk about this more in a future episode when my brain is more online. Um, but there's been this idea floating around lately in my brain. And I think I've spoken with Michael Chittister about this and, and, and I'm not going to be able to justify it well right now. So, okay, everyone, this is a, this is an idea in progress. All right. So it, it, it is not um, fully formed yet. It's a baby idea, mm -hmm. but there's, there's this sense um, that Blossom um, or, or Tsainen, as, as Lakushna calls them, are, are on the perimeter, mm. right? Um, and, and there's some idea of this. So, so yes, my openings are on my body, like you have to hit me. Mm -hmm. But as we've talked about, our especially modern conception of having to hit the person to threaten the opening can be taken to a problematically literal level. Yes. So thinking about them as hang and wind to these extreme corners starts mm -hmm. to give a different thought. Mm -hmm. So I could hang and wind to your openings, but I can hang and wind in mine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's a, just, again, just to think of other, other ways you can play with sure. the way it's presented here. Um, so that's, sure. that's kind of fun. Yeah. So I used to, I used to think of winding. Um, I used to, well, so, so, so I, at, at, in the, in where I'm at right now, I think of winding as or I think of an aspect that's fundamental to winding is sort of having, having inside position, right? Having a strong opposition of uh, my sword in between your sword and me. Sure. Uh, with, with, with strong structure or, or a shortened point, right? So uh, meaning your, your, your sword is on my cross. And so it doesn't matter where my point is pointing because you're, I'm intercepting the, the direction of force at my cross. Sure. Right. I I used to think of there being sort of a strong winding and a weak winding, right? So mm. basically an inside a winding with inside position and an and a winding with outside position. Yep. Um and and you uh you know through no fault of your own totally radicalized me. Um <laughs> Uh, so I, so I no longer, I no longer think of that. And this we've talked about already, and we've obviously spent lots of time talking about offline, but, um, I now believe that any winding is meant to be, to use Myers terminology, uh, taker, uh, and a strong, and, and, and to, you know, uh, to drift back to the five words, a strong taker. So I have my, I have my sword in between your sword and mine and i'm moving my hilt to your weak and i can be doing that above or below mm -hmm. and and that and and the idea with the sort of winding to the openings is as you push your sword across i can mm -hmm. change from above to below right mm -hmm. where i'm maintaining inside position throughout the entire action um and that's sort of the way that i think about winding and you know I haven't seen too many people sign up for that yet. <laughs> um, and it's I don't hard. even think that you, well, it is, it's, it, it's, a, it's a tough sell because when you read, uh, you know, you, you read the eight 
winding section, it really seems like the text is telling you to perform this outside winding, right? To thrust from outside of your opponent's blade, sort of as oh, in a similar vein to like a duplier, right? Um, and mm -hmm. I've seen so many interpretations that yield that result. And I read the text and it's clear to me why one might think of it that way. Right. Um, but I've gone away from that uh, because it just makes so much more sense to me that we want to maintain our position of control the entire time. Yeah. And one of the problems with that outside thrust is that if my opponent can get his the strong of his blade up to my point during my outside thrust mm -hmm. all of his all of his subsequent actions are faster than any action that i do in response right like it leaves you so unbelievably vulnerable um it's just a matter of them having any kind of sense of what to do from there right mm -hmm. um and so i and so i've i've moved away and i've also moved away from that in my fencing like i no longer uh, try and, or I no longer allow myself to hit, um, even like duplirins. I won't, I won't even attempt a duplirin unless I've, I'm controlling their swords so well that I'm almost hitting them before they even cross the center. Yeah. Right. Whereas at one point I might've, you know, we, our swords might've been bound in a neutral way where no one's controlling mm. the body. No one's point is in presence. And yeah, uh, and I feel a little bit of pressure and I might go and I would score hitters on that. You know, sure. Be fine. But I just don't think that that's em embodying uh, the art as Lisa Nauer is describing it, right? Which is like with the Zorn, Zorn how has primacy, take control. That's it. You don't, you know. And so that's sort of been my attitude towards um, hanging winding. So I'm curious yeah. now when you, when you talk about what, uh, the way that you were describing it, um where where are your thoughts about um well so like the perimeter so i'm talking about inside position where what how do you integrate your thoughts or how do you like how are you thinking about positioning in terms of like the perimeter the way that you were describing it? oh yeah no i mean all i mean with that is that in my wind i'm going to be sending my hilt towards the perimeter that's sure. all okay. I was trying to say. Yeah, with that. yeah. Okay. Great. Um, and then maybe my point too, right? Depending on, depending on right. whatever. Sure, right. sure, sure. But for me, um, to go back to like the verb idea and away from the mm. the technical tactical sorty thing, mm -hmm. is we all know what to hang is, mm -hmm. right? Um, to linger, to hang around, to literally uh, be be uh, hung from the ceiling, right? Mm. Uh, you know, um, because because with hanging, there's this idea, like that's why we call it hanging around, like like lingering. There is a connected aspect that's an important part of that meaning. Winding at this point. It's just a spiral, baby. Yeah, I love That's it. That's yeah. all it is, right? So <clears throat> hanging and spiraling with the openings. Mm -hmm. Boy, yeah. does that actually make sense in English? Yeah, right. it kind of does. And it gets you to the actions more easily, um, yeah. I think, uh, than maybe some other uh, verb, verb uses right. or, or trying to stick with it being a proper noun. I think we get stuck when we insist on keeping it only a proper noun. Just try the verb and see what happens, you know? Yeah. See yeah. if that helps you get there in your brain. Hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, no, it's super cool. All right. One last line, uh, which is schlock, vox, strike, stieg mit stoßen. Yeah. 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 So um, what do you think about that line? Well, so, I mean, there are so many different ways that you can manifest that, right? Like I've seen your video, uh, you've seen mine. Um, there's, there have been a couple other videos uh, floating around the ether. Um, you know, you know, how do you, you know, it's, it's, so 
I would say I'll, I'll give it two options. Number one, yeah. number one, it's it's uh, it, it, there's a possibility that it could just be a drill, you know. Yeah. There, there's a possibility that it could just be like, you know, an a, a thought experiment, right? How do we yeah. turn this? How do we turn this three eight? 24 how do we do that you know um i i i don't know i don't know where i come down on that i've given i've done my video yeah. <laughs> you know yeah um, you know uh we'll put the link in the show notes but um, and your video uh, too right i think yours is up on youtube isn't it yeah yeah uh yeah right um but uh joseph north did a did a did a lecture for igx um, and then there's a recording now uh, that that is public, so we'll put the link. Um, talking about talking about the Zadel as poetry, mm -hmm. and one of the things that he has thrown out is that this line might be trying to say, "Strike when they're striking, thrust when they're thrusting," mm. as to tell you which wounder to choose during winding and hanging, mm. and that I find extremely compelling. Mm. as as a thought um particularly with these spiraling winds mm -hmm. <clears throat> so uh i mean i don't want to put too many words in his mouth but uh we'll link it um and and so that's i mean that's a new thought to me like within the past i don't know three weeks ago i think i heard of it mm -hmm. um and maybe he's not the originator originator but that's that's where the idea came to me so um and and i think you know i think i think that is as good an approach as you can get right so like what are we trying to do with these lines right we're just trying to put them to work yeah you know and so how do you put that to work well okay the way that we're going to do it today is we're going to put it to work like this you thrust and i'm going to thrust and yeah. i'm going to see see you know you know because really at the end of the day what we're what i'm hoping to reach is just embodying swordsmanship right so like yeah every moment that I spend playing with ideas with a sword in my hand is right. going to get me further down the path of understanding what the hell I'm doing. Yep. Right. Yep. Um, so when I look at, when I think about winding, right, for instance, you know, I've got the the video that I posted, but then, uh, then you've got your video, right. Mm -hmm. And I've, I, the moment that you released it, I immediately started doing those winds, right? Like I immediately started doing, uh, trying to do the things with the sword that you were doing. Right? right, because it's not going to make me less of a swords person, right? <laughs> right. To like know like, how to oh do no. that well. I I played with an idea and I loved it, or I played with an idea and I hated it, and either way, I played with an idea. Well, and also like I've I've re I've I've wired my brain to to be more fluent with the use of the sword. Yeah. Right. And so I, my muscle memory is better. My athleticism is better. Uh, my, yeah. my muscular, uh, stamina has grown, right? Like, right. you know, right. Um, and the thing is, is like, we almost treat like doing sword actions, um, to make an analogy, right. We treat sword actions like there's one right way. Mm -hmm. And if you even play with the wrong way, it's going to be like, now you're just fucked. Right. Yeah. And that's not only so radically untrue, but but even more so to talk about your re rewiring. If we think about it like, well, you know, James, we're speaking English, so it's inappropriate for me to throw out, you know, a Spanish word here. Right. What are you talking about? It's totally fine. Right. If it didn't right. hurt anybody. <laughs> right. 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 Exactly. Um Okay, so so we made it through exactly one comment. <laughs> so I guess we're just gonna have to do another another technique talk because I have um, yeah, I have a bunch yeah of, we have, have let's yeah, do another so, one next week. Yeah, um, I have I, I have a lot of things to say about what it, some of the other ones to sort of just tease the audience. We've got um, how to close distance with the Veer sets in. We've mm -hmm. got, oh, we got what distance is, right? Or what, um, so yeah, somebody actually commented, they gave us some uh, Italian terms, right? Which aren't necessarily uh, word for word in the Zettel, but um, but that doesn't mean that there are ideas that cannot be explored in terms of 
uh, at least in our tradition. Right. Um, and so, and so we'll do that. And then what was the other one? Um, oh, and then, uh, oh, taking the neck. Yeah, that's a, that, um, I want to hear you talk about that. I've got, I've got my ideas. They're kind of heretical a little bit with regards to that particular okay. line. I've, I've posted them years ago. I posted something about, about what that is supposed to mean, but we can do that yeah. next week. Okay. That sounds awesome. Right. As good talks. We'll talk soon. Bye, Bye guys.